Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now... Well, hello, church family. Uh, Pastor Bob and I are here again. Uh, wanted to just share some thoughts and words and prayer. Hope that it's, a, it's a enlightening, maybe as well as encouraging to you. And... Um, so I'd like to do what I normally do, and that is just open up with a word of prayer, and I'll share a song, and then we're just going to have a devotional. So uh, let me do that. Let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, it is so good to be here this, this day and to uh, share in prayer, in song, and to take a look at your word. Your word is so very important. And it's vital in our lives. It is the guidepost on which we must navigate in this world. And Father, we thank you for it. And Lord, we just pray for those that are uh, unable to get out and who are, may, they may seem trapped at home. Uh, those who are struggling because of their jobs, maybe they're they're, either their business is closed or maybe they are unemployed because this is such an unusual time right now. But Lord, we know one thing, and that is that you are in control. And none of this has taken you unaware. And Father, we are so grateful for that because our faith and our trust uh, lies within you and you alone. So we give you the praise and glory, even in the midst of such circumstances in Jesus name amen. amen I want to share a song with you uh, today it's um, uh, Barbara Fairchild who was a very popular singer in the 60s and 70s and uh, who did a number of songs if you were in the country music it was Teddy Bear that was her claim to fame but uh, Iris Stanfield wrote this I want to say it was in 53 and um, he had been, he had, because one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is, I'm sorry, today is um, uh, discouragement, uh, things that occur, mm -hmm. doubt, all these types of things that occur in one's life. And it happens to all of us. And, um, but Ira Stanfill had, was going through a tough time and he was listening to some missionaries who changed his life. And he penned this song uh, just a few hours after hearing a conversation with them. I just thought I would share it with you. It's really written from a Christian's perspective. And uh, it's a conversation between a believer and the Lord. Now, maybe you can relate to this. I don't know. But it's a very pretty song. I like it. It goes like this. I travel down a lonely road. And no one seems to care The burden on my weary back Has bowed me to despair I oft complain to Jesus How folks were treating me And then I heard him say so tenderly The cross was all so heavy on the Calvary road. The cross became so heavy that I fell beneath the load. Be faithful, weary pilgrim, the morning I can see. Lift up your cross and follow close to me. I work so hard for Jesus, I often boast and say. I've sacrificed so many things to walk the narrow way. 
I gave up fame and fortune, oh, I'm worth a lot to thee. And then I hear him say so tenderly, I left my throne in glory and counted all but loss. My hands were nailed in anger upon a cruel cross. If I'm a huge success while living here, that means nothing for eternity. I'll lift my cross and follow close to thee. I'll lift my cross and follow close to thee. Wow, Andy. I like that song. I don't know how many times I've heard that song. It's and an oldie, I, but it's a good one. It's good. Well, there's nothing wrong with being an oldie. Uh, no. My grandchildren tell me, well, Granddad, you're an oldie. Um, I said, well, tell me that now too. <laughs> how old do you have to be to be an oldie? I don't know. Wow. Thank you so much for reminding us. And in the Bible, there's a scripture verse that says, Deny thyself, take up thy what? Take cross. up thy cross and follow me. And that's exactly what the Lord wants us to do. Absolutely. Today, I'd like to read some scripture from the Bible. And for you who are viewing, i uh, like to read it so that you can hear it. And it is from the book of John, uh, chapter 20. And the scripture is talking about a guy named Thomas. You remember that guy in the Bible? We often refer to him as Doubting Thomas. You see, after the resurrection, the disciples, they, uh, they gathered together. And guess who visited them? Jesus, the resurrected Lord, visited them. But... There was someone who was a wall or absent, and that was Thomas. Well, after Jesus visited those disciples and they saw him, the resurrected Christ, when when they talked to Thomas, they said, Thomas, you missed, you missed something fantastic. The resurrected Christ. We we saw Jesus. Remember what old Thomas said? Ah nah. I doubt that. You you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Kind of like what we say a lot of times. Well, let me read to you what the Bible says about it. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with verse 24. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were gathered inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's a wonderful scripture of passage, yes. Andy. And I just want us to spend a little time today talking about it as we share together. Uh, the story of the cross is such a wonderful story. The crucifixion, resurrection of Jesus, and then as he appeared to the disciples, and now Thomas is there when he appears again. Uh, Thomas believed in Jesus, yet he doubted that the disciples saw him. He doubted the resurrection. <laughs> they, they, they all did. Uh, they, they all did. They weren't yeah. even there. Yeah. And, and remember, when he was crucified, John was the only one there. But uh, the disciples had all fled. And, and so Thomas was like so many of the other disciples. 
Yet, when the disciples said, we have seen Jesus, uh, he just doubted that. It, he was, it was hard for him to get a hold of that. And, and I think about our doubts. How, how in crisis situations like the virus that we're all struggling with today, uh, there are a lot of questions. How many times have we asked, why, Lord? I mean, why this virus? Why is it that so many innocent people have to be killed or, or die? Think today. Today, I saw on the news where they had a terrible tornado over in Mississippi and, and up in up in the Tennessee, and and there were just just a number of people who were killed. When you think about that, why, Lord? Or I've talked many times to couples who have lost children, and they will say, "Why, Lord?" Or maybe maybe you're asking that question today. Maybe you're saying. Why, Lord? Why, God? Why, why have I lost my job? Why, why are we in, having to stay quarantined in our homes? Why is all of this happening anyway? I thought you were good, God. I thought you, I thought you were in charge of everything. Why is this happening? Well, Andy, I really believe that there are two ways to understand the will of God. One, we have to understand that God does cause some things to directly happen. In the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God did what? Created. All right. So he caused creation to happen. He took nothing and made something out of it. Now only God can do that. Absolutely. And he created the world. Okay, there are some things that he directly does. And then there are things that he just, uh, he just allows to happen. When Adam and Eve sinned in the book of Genesis, they chose to do what God told them not to do. And he allowed that to happen. He didn't cause that to happen. So I think when these crises hit us, we become uh, doubtful. We become critical of God. And, and maybe we don't even want to, to trust him or believe in him because of these terrible things that's happening. We have to understand that God causes some things and permits some things. He will never cause anything to happen to you or Andy to you or to me that is not good. That is not going to be something that he's going to work through and bring to his glory right. goodness out of it, Andy. And so Thomas was a doubter. I think so many times we uh, we we let our doubts keep us from being faithful and doing what God wants us to do. It happens all the time. We allow the circumstances or in the world to sort of dictate our behavior yeah. and and how we react to things. And as opposed to saying, okay, Lord, I know, I don't understand why, yep. but I know that you're in control and I'm going to trust you and your providence. And I love the last verse yeah. there. Um, and I may steal some of your thunder there, but go ahead, um, man. Take the lightning with it also. <laughs> <laughs> the, when he's talking to Thomas and he says, you know, Thomas, that's great that you've been able to, to see me, yeah. touch me. But he said, blessed are those who have not yes. seen and yet have believed. Yeah. That's, us. That's us. That's today. That's I mean, we're talking 2000 years later. God, you know, Jesus there is saying, blessed are those who by faith accept yes. what he was saying right there in John chapter 20, verse 29. Um, that's so neat, you know. And so, yes, we are blessed um, because Jesus said so. But uh Faith, trust uh, in God's divine yes. providence yes. Uh, is so so very important. It is the fact but otherwise we're going to be tossed tossed uh, about by every whim and every emotion that comes about. We see right. it today in these circumstances sure. that are going that are yeah. that are happening. Yeah. People are wigging out and things are happening. They're such reactionary. As opposed to saying, you know what, I may not understand everything, but I got a God who does. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So. Well, Jesus told Thomas, said, uh, you know, blessed are you because, because you have seen and you have believed. Uh, but what about all those who have not seen and yet they believe? Our faith is kind of like electricity. Mm -hmm. And it, I have never seen electricity. Now, I've seen lightning flash in the sky. But I have never seen electricity. But I know one thing, that when I walk in a room and flip on a light switch, electricity causes a light to come on. I know it's there. 
Uh, but uh, but I, I, I've never seen him. And that's the way it is with our Lord. We know he's there. He's there all the time. He's, he's with, with each one of us who believe in him. And today, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you are a Christian, you know Christ, the Lord is with you. And don't, don't let Satan fool you or tempt you to think that God's gone off and left you because you're going through troubles, because the walls just seem to be coming in on you. Uh, it, it's like people who said, well, I won't enter that building because I don't have a hard hat on because God might cause the building to fall on me. That, that's utterly ridiculous. God is going to work through every situation for you as his child. And here's one thought that I'd like to kind of wrap up things with, that anything that God allows to happen in my life, okay, or anything God causes to happen in my life or your life, uh, God has already already he's aware of it already in other words he knows already what tomorrow holds and he knows and if he allows it to happen then he has a purpose for it doesn't he Andy? absolutely and he's going to work through it and so um, so we would encourage you today to keep your faith up don't let those doubts hey don't don't let your doubts determine uh what you do how you believe Rather, let your faith be the determined in one thing. That's the important thing. My favorite verse of scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Andy and I and our church family, First Baptist Church of Ponte Beach, Beach, it is our prayer that you will accept Christ into your life. Let him be your savior because he loves you so much. Christ died for you, and you just have to open your heart up, open your life up, and invite him to come in, and he will. Well, thank you so much for viewing today, and, and may the Lord bless you, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound.